Well, Apple fans, exciting news from Google I.O. 2017 today, as the Google Assistant is not coming because it's already on the Apple iPhones. All right, looking over the app design right off the bat after we launched the Google Assistant, it's very similar and reminiscent of the Android app, of course, because Google designed it themselves. You know, they made it exactly what they wanted it to look like. And clicking on this button on the top right, we have the cards here that you can check out. If you click on your stuff, you can uh, check your reminders that you've set, agendas, shopping lists, whatever you want the assistant to do, uh, you can click on that to double check to make sure you have it correct. And uh, the explore button takes you to these cards here that is very reminiscent of what we also have on Android. Uh, this is how you can get acquainted with Google and the assistant when you first get it. It's very beneficial for people who have never had it before and that's a majority of the iPhone users um, have never tried the assistant. So this is a great way to learn the first, I guess, 30 minutes you've had it. Uh, so that you can basically recite what is in the quotations here and Google Assistant can do that. So we click on that, go back to the actual menu. And so let's start it off by uh, checking the weather. That's the usual thing. What's the weather like? This is the top result. Well, okay. What's the weather like? Because I didn't have my sentence. Because I, I was continuing to talk while I clicked it too early. So uh, it got the weather. And let's also do, what about this weekend? Friday through Sunday in Fullerton, it'll be sunny with highs around 88 and lows around 60. So as you can see there, clicking on that microphone, you can actually speak to your Google Assistant, which is very neat. That's exactly what you can do on Android. However, uh, for something like uh, OK Google, sorry if I woke your phones, but uh, there you go, it has the voice recognition. Here's the top search result. But the difference between this and what we have on Android is you have to open it within that app the microphones do not pick up through the home screen or through the lock screen. So, OK Google doesn't work. OK Google, OK Google, OK Google doesn't work. Same thing with the lock screen. OK Google doesn't have the wake feature as, um, I, you know, iOS is a bit, iOS is a bit uh, tricky there with the API. So uh, that's to be expected though. But inside the app, it actually works. OK, Google. OK, Google. What's the weather like in Chicago? Right now in Chicago, it's 85 and mostly cloudy. Today, it'll be cloudy with a forecasted high of 85 and a low of 68. OK, so it works. And we can do, when you click on the keyboard there, as you saw, you can type in, when do the Cubs play? next and as you can see here the Google Assistant will not respond verbally to me because I typed it so it knows that I don't want it to talk back uh, so it's smart enough to know when you click on the microphone you are available for it to talk to when you click on the keyboard it probably recognizes that you might not want it to respond maybe you're in a business meeting uh, and a board member or someone is talking and you just want to do a quick Google Assistant search so you just type it in instead of verbally talking and it gives you a response without verbally saying it so that's very awesome that it does that um, that's pretty cool where are the Cubs in the standings? The Cubs are third in the National League Central, two and a half games behind the Cardinals. Who leads the team in home runs? This is the top result. So that's pretty cool. It knows where, um, it knows who I'm talking about because I was talking about the Cubs. So all I had to say was, who leads that team in home runs and uh, I didn't have to say who leads the Cubs in home runs again because it knows we're talking about the Cubs obviously it couldn't give me the actual person that I'm looking for I, I don't who, who does lead the team right now in home runs it looks like I'm gonna say either Bryant or um, batting okay let's check really quickly I'm, this is gonna like drive me crazy if I don't find out 
it is actually Rizzo and Bryant tied for home runs, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a very simple thing. It took me to ESPN for that. Uh, but yeah, it has that feature. That's pretty neat. Uh, there are certain restrictions when it comes to this phone and what it can do with Google Assistant. Like I said before, we can't reprogram Siri. Siri is stuck here with this button. You cannot reprogram this to do anything with uh, Google Assistant. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> uh, she's pretty mad that we have Google Assistant on here now, but it's okay because hopefully um, this hopefully this port makes Apple step up their Siri game because Siri has been stagnant for a very long time and uh, they've been passed by the Google Assistant and Alexa and you know some other third-party assistants too. What we can also do is put this widget on here. So if you click edit, you can adjust your widget page. I've already done that. So you can add a widget to here and the widget is, I, I hate these widgets to be honest though. They're they're not what widgets really are. But uh, you could put uh, Google Assistant right here. And as you can see, there's talk to your assistant and a microphone button. So all you have to do is simply click on the microphone button and it takes you to the assistant it's already recording. So that's essentially clicking on the mic while you're in here. So it's actually listening to you. Uh, so you can do that. It's not that helpful, to be honest. This is not what widgets are supposed to be. If you're an Android user or if you've ever used an Android device, you know exactly what widget is supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to put a widget anywhere on your home screens for convenience. But since iOS is so locked up like this, let's say I want it on my homepage, right? I want the Google Assistant on my homepage. Since I can't use my Touch ID button, I can't do that. I can't do that here. I have to actually swipe to my left to go to this particular screen for a widget. So I, it's not it's not a widget. I, I don't really want to consider these things widgets, but that's another story. Uh, this is here for you to use if you want to use it. But otherwise, that's basically what the Google Assistant is. If you still want to learn more and uh, see more in-depth stuff, we've actually done many videos in the past uh, about the Google Assistant. I'll have those linked below using Android devices. So if this is your first time seeing a Google Assistant um, on a phone, Definitely check those videos out, even though those are Android devices, this is a very close port to it. Uh, it is a inferior port, however, because of the API. Um, so you're not getting the full extent of what the flexibility of Google Assistant can do. But for the most part, for the basic functionality of fact checking or asking it to send a text message or uh, reciting your emails or scheduling, this is very beneficial and it does exactly what the Android version does. So uh, very cool, very big step forward for iPhone users to have something like this. And even if you don't want to use it, it at least is an option for you to use. And options are always good in the mobile world. Once again, my name is Alex with Sipnotech. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of Google Assistant on the iPhone. Uh, for you iPhone users, have you always been interested in the Google Assistant. I mean, seeing um, this develop on Android, were you kind of interested in using it? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell button below so that you don't miss a single video in the future. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!